Today we have a very special addition to the collection of limited edition controllers here at Gamer Heaven. The ones on the wall behind me are by no means all of them. These are the ones that I actively actually play with. What we have today guys is a new in box, first run or first edition Gears of War 4 Microsoft Elite controller. In this current condition, this controller can be sold for between 900 and 1100 US dollars for an average of 1000. While that is an insane amount of money when you're talking about a video game controller, I am going to explain to you guys how to properly inspect and appraise any limited edition or collector's controller in particular, this Gears 4 Elite here. Some of the ways that you can differentiate an authentic licensed Microsoft product from a clone, replica, or remake. We're about to slice into this box together, unbox it, which is gonna reduce the value about $280. But in my opinion, that is well worth it to show you guys what comes with this version of the Elite and what an authentic product is supposed to look like. And most importantly, if you are a current owner of this controller, maybe you'll have more of an appreciation or understanding about what you have in your closet. Or if you are on the market for picking up one of these bad boys for your collection, you'll know exactly what you're looking for so you get the best bang for your buck and don't get bent over and taken to pound town. Let's get it. So first of all, what makes this controller so rare, so valuable, and so expensive? So first of all, it is the only limited edition Elite controller to ever come out of Microsoft's factory. They did make an all-white Elite that was branded as a special run or special edition. However, they were very common and weren't really perceived by the community very well. Secondly, the attention to detail and customization of this controller that Microsoft did, every single accessory included with this bad boy, and basically every square inch of the controller has been customized for a Gears of War 4 theme, including a bunch of little hidden Easter eggs that you might not even know if you own this controller. Next up, this was a very, very limited run. Now, I did an extensive amount of research when shopping for this controller, and I was unable to find a definitive answer as to how many of these were produced. However, however, I have deduced it down to about 1,000 units if you're just getting the controller like this. And the final reason why these are so valuable, so rare, and so sought after is there aren't that many of them in circulation anymore, at least authentic originals like this. There are a lot of clones out there. You can buy shell and component component kits with the face buttons and battery tray to make a pretty close replica. However, there are some things you just simply cannot replicate, which I'm going to show you guys today. So you can make sure when you're shopping for these on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, if anybody uses that for anything besides prostitutes or good old fashioned missionary position eBay, make sure you don't get ripped off with somebody selling a thousand dollar clone that they built for two hundred dollars and the reason there aren't that many of these in circulation is unfortunately because of the lack of quality control when it comes to the elite one controllers even the elite twos to be 110 percent honest but the elite one they had savage stick drift breaking bumpers sticky triggers and even the face buttons most commonly a and b would get all gummed up which means a lot of people that had these controllers and it was out of the one year warranty for xbox accessories which now it's one year but at the time it was only a 90 day warranty for these controllers a lot of people ended up just chucking these out when they broke because they couldn't fix them. Now, if you are gonna purchase one of these from eBay or Facebook Marketplace, I, I do strongly suggest that you get it new in box, sealed condition, because a lot of times if it has been unboxed and used, played with, there are some accessories that might've gotten lost. For example, the proprietary charging cable, the magnetic thumbsticks, which are a nice maroon red, so people just buy themselves the black ones off of Amazon and replace it with those. Or if anything did break on the original controller and they needed to use repairs, it is no longer a complete authentic original controller as it does have replacement parts on it. So like I said, I did an extensive amount of research when shopping for this Elite Gears of War 4 edition, and I did land on this bad boy after going back and forth email correspondence with the owner of this controller, who is a collector and has a bunch of awesome controllers as well. And I did pay 500 US dollars for this controller, but again, the fact is I could turn around right now before opening this package up and sell this for $1,000 on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or Craigslist, and it would probably sell pretty quickly. However, I am not going to do that. In about 10, 15, 20, 30 years, this controller will be worth a whole hell of a lot more than $1,000, especially considering this is probably going to be the only limited edition or custom version of an Elite that Microsoft ever does. So the box itself is in pretty good condition. There is a couple of scrapes on here, but nothing too crazy. And one of the things you want to look for when you're buying a new sealed in box condition like this is the stickers up here. Now you can tell if they've been cut with something like a razor blade or also the previous owner has carefully peeled these off and then replaced them after they went to relabel it as new in box. Now you can buy on Amazon a little pack of now you can buy on Amazon a little pack of clear labels like this. So if you're trying to uh, repackage things, you can use those. However, generally when you do that, there's a couple things that happen. Even if you are careful about removing these, it is going to rip up some of the ink or some of the covering on the 
cardboard itself. You can tell if this is a five-year-old sticker right here because it's starting to yellow a little bit, as you guys can see that here. All right, so we are about to reduce the value of this controller from about a thousand US dollars down to about 700. That is a painful little bit of ASMR for you guys to listen to. But it is well worth it considering considering I want to see this bad boy in all of its glory and and most of all I want to show you guys what is supposed to be included in this controller. So first of all on the inside of the box there you see the Gears Omen logo in there. Literally every literally every piece of the packaging as well as the included accessories is Gears of War themed which is pretty sick. So you've got some bloody fingerprints along the side here. And then you also have a little pull tab here with your documentation. Stick your finger in the hole. <laughs> This pulls out. You have more Gears themed cardboard in here. Heck yes, Microsoft. Now I will say this right off the bat, Microsoft does do a lot better limited edition runs of their controllers than PlayStation. I have owned several PS3 and 4 limited edition controllers and all they are is usually a custom front shell. That's it. Microsoft does face buttons, laser etching that cuts actual indentation into the controllers. Uh, and a bunch of little Easter eggs in the controllers themselves, which I think is really cool. So on the back of this card, there is a code, which I usually would show to you guys. So the first person that sees it gets to unlock it. However, I want to keep this code intact if I ever go do go to resell this bad boy. Hopefully the uh, Xbox One servers are still online when that might be. And then in this little box right here, this is going to be your 10 foot braided micro USB cable. Holy moly as well as two AA batteries, as this does still run on AA batteries. I'm gonna keep this cable tied down and everything, but as you can see, it does also match the controller. It is ruby red with a couple of lighter red spirals through them, which I think is a really, really cool design. And I just do, and I really do like the fact that every accessory for this bad boy goes with the theme of the controller. There's a fly in here, I gotta kill this guy. So again, for resale purposes, I'm keeping this battery pack sealed. I am not opening up the micro USB charging cable. I'm basically keeping this in as close to mint condition as I possibly can. Now going along with that theme, you might wanna, wanna rip this bad boy out of the packaging, but this actually does not remove, this is part of the box itself. Now you can slide out your documentation out the bottom like that. You have your regulatory and warranty guide. You have a little sheet here telling you that you can customize your Elite controller directly from the settings of your Xbox One or Series S or X. You just go into the accessories section and you are able to customize things like button mapping, thumbstick dead zones, and a whole lot of other stuff, even trigger curves, which is really cool. And then of course you have your quick startup guide as well. Now as for the controller itself, you are in this nice soft carrying case here, which does have a rubberized weapon from Gears of War 4. Very nice little maroon pull tab here. Now for the piece de resistance, the actual controller itself, sliding this bad boy open. We have our controller here. There's a little bit of dust and lint in here, but nothing out of the ordinary for having this bad boy sit in its original packaging for five years. Now, pulling the controller out, we will get to this in just a hot minute. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning piece from Microsoft here with the actual scratches etched into the controller. Yeah, every inch of this controller is just custom tip to tits. You do have a little piece of foam in here, which is of course also maroon that is removable, but that will keep your controller propped in there just right, which include two dome sticks and two concave sticks. Then you will have your four metal paddles, which are magnetized, which has always been a good design in my book for the Microsoft Elite 1 and 2. I have tested a lot of premium controllers on this channel, Scuf, Aim, Battle Beaver, Razer, Nacon Rev, Evolution, Astro C40, just to name a couple. That's not a couple, that's a few. Uh, just to name a, a good little, little handful there. I always really did like the Elite Paddle design for a good reason, it works nicely. So a couple of things you wanna look for on the controller itself to make sure that you do have an authentic controller and not a replica, as there are kits that you can get online. Pictures on screen here, shell kits that are anywhere between 30 and $60 that do have things like the front and back shell, face buttons, and a whole lot of other things, but there's some things that cannot be replicated, emulated, or faked. First of all, inside the left analog stick there, you are gonna see one of seven sayings. This one simply says Gears of War 4. You cannot buy a replica of this aluminum left magnetic stick. I've looked, haven't found them anywhere. They might exist, but I have not found them. Next up, and this is a very, very commonly overlooked piece of these controllers. If you remove this magnetic D-pad wheel here, you will see the magnetized D-pad under there that says Grub Killer and is maroon, just like that. To my knowledge, this piece isn't floating around on the market anywhere, so that is a telltale sign if you pop off your D-pad that you might have yourself a replica if this is just plain lime green. 
Also, this will have maroon anti-friction or impact rings around the outside of the shell. That is to keep you from scraping across uh, rough plastic while you are at full lock which is always a good feature to have on a premium paddle controller. Also, you wanna make sure that your Xbox home button is this grayed out slash gunmetal version. Next up, triggers and bumpers are also maroon and they do also have a slight blood, and they also do have a slight blood pattern to them as well. On the back, the actual trigger lock mechanisms are going to be maroon, not lime green like the other Microsoft Elites. Also, paddle buttons as well as trigger lock icons are also Gears of War font or themed, which is really, really cool. Little bloody thumbprint right here. You should also have a rubberized pad right there to keep your batteries in there snugly. The model should be 1698. To make sure that it is an authentic Microsoft uh, sticker label in here, it should say hello from Seattle right there at the bottom, which this one does. And also you should see my 003 on this serial number on the bottom for this run of limited edition controllers. Hopefully you guys can see that in there. Also, if you peek through to the chip, you will see the words Microsoft or at least oft OFT right there on the actual chip to make sure this isn't some cheap Chinese generic board or chipset, uh, PCB printed circuit board. This is an authentic Microsoft product here. Also something else you wanna check is down here, you wanna make sure that the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack does have an exposed piece of brass in there uh, or metal that lets you know that the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack has not been snapped off or broken as that is a common point of failure for these bad boys. Also just take a peek in the accessory port Make sure nothing's uh, a wonky there. Test out your trigger locks. When they are in the down position, it should cut out about 40 to 50% of your trigger pull. Magnetic thumbsticks work good. Switching onboard profiles between one and two works just good. And also the options and share button will be this maroon color. Again, I have seen a lot of foes or replicas out there just use black option and share buttons. Telltale sign that is not authentic and also Last but not least, these face buttons over here. As you see, they are blacked out with kind of a maroon or blood red lettering on the face buttons there. Now, a lot of times when you look at these, these will be slightly brighter if they are replicas. As again, you can buy face buttons to build a custom controller all day, but Microsoft used a very unique color code. So take a deep gander there, pause the video if you have to, and compare them to your face buttons. Just make sure, boys. All right, next up, these paddles back here, these aluminum magnetized paddles back here will be maroon with a little bit of lighter red blood fingerprints on the back of them, just like that. Now, again, you can buy these replica paddles or replacements. So if you do lose these or break them or something, well, they're aluminum, so I don't know what you do to break them, but if you do lose them or something, or your dog eats them, he's gonna be having a hell of a time pooping these out. But so again, that is something that could be replicated. However, I have seen a lot of the uh, generic replacements do not have the same level of detail in the thumbprints there. So just keep, a, just keep an eye peeled, be ever vigilant for those. Yeah, overall, this is just such a gorgeous looking controller. It really is. I really do love their paddle design. I liked it on my white elite King Slayer that we built on this channel. That was one of the first Actually, that was the first custom controller build that I did on this channel. That was a hell of a controller. Alrighty, boys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop, we're gonna go ahead and look at some forgeries, some fakes, some phonies, some clones, some replicas, some ripoffs, some pieces of shit, basically, and then also some authentic controllers as well, and uh, solidify the fact that these controllers are indeed worth the uh, ridiculous price point that I set forth in the beginning of this video, and I'm not just full of shit. So sharing my screen over here, Oh, what a deal, $250? Okay, cool, so clicking on it here, I see some issues right off the bat, and you guys probably do as well since you've already watched the video. Okay, so the thumbsticks, they are black, not maroon. These paddles, they are silver, not maroon. These options buttons, these face buttons, the home button is the wrong color. The D-pad is not maroon. He did spend the 10, 15 bucks to buy the uh, maroon accessory cable to really give that forgery look. Let's go ahead and look through the rest here. Okay, cool. The impact rings are black, not maroon. Okay, he did pop for the grub killer uh, D-pad magnet. Good for him. Uh, there's no etching in the bottom of this left thumbstick here. All right, there's a little hair right here. Maybe one of his girlfriend's Wookiee pubes. That's not gonna add any value to the controller. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, Jimmy, don't do it to me, Jimmy. So first of all, uh, this is a dead giveaway if you have owned a regular Microsoft Elite One, the black or the white version. Uh, these are lime green. These should be maroon, obviously, with the authentic controller. Also, look at those paddles. Those are clearly a forgery, a replica. They look nothing like the authentics. So this is... Uh, I, 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 uh, the triggers here are the 
parts bin special, you know, three cents to produce, regular missionary position, vanilla bean ice cream, no sex on a Saturday, triggers. This is clearly a forgery. Oh, yep. Okay, the activator pads for the paddles, those are lime green on this controller, and authentic, those are supposed to be, you guys can't see what the hell daddy's talking about, can you? Uh, those are supposed to be maroon standard controller that came with this bundle, which by the way, this bundle is going to be worth some money in the near future. Oh, there's an elite right there. And that looks like an authentic actually. This might be a really good buy. Okay. So it's incredibly dirty. I don't know if it's just dirty or if it's damaged. Okay. He's lost the, uh, regular accessory cable for it, but this does look like it was, yep. This is an authentic. These are filthy. Uh, this guy really does not take good care of his shit, which makes me wonder about the if the console runs or runs well. Okay, so there's no buy it now offer, but this is currently at 490 bucks, which is a fair deal, actually a pretty good deal, I would say, considering it has an authentic elite, two controllers and a series S and all these games. So, hey guys, get on eBay. Uh, what is this one here? $87. This is probably some kind of a scam or something. Extremely rare. Yeah, we know it is. That's what the whole video is about. Okay, so there's nine days left. This is a brand new listing 385 or best offer let's see what you got here bud all right that is that looks authentic at first glance you're missing the cable but nothing out of the ordinary and of course this doesn't have the box or anything but uh this this is, does appear to be authentic mm-hmm yep she checks out so far oh okay all right so this controller has been disassembled which means something has been repaired something's been broken and then repaired you can tell because that t8 screw right there uh there is two T8 screws in each one of the palm grips and then another one behind the battery door. Uh, generally, what you're supposed to do, guys, is take off the sticker uh, cleanly and without ripping it or anything, then remove the T8 screw so you can replace the sticker and it looks like it was never disassembled. But um, it, this, this has been disassembled. Also, that looks like that's stripped out as well. So if you do ever uh, anything ever does break on this again, uh, for example, you know, a thumbstick gets drift or your headphone jack goes out. Uh, it's going to be a real bitch to get this thing apart again because that looks like it's stripped out. OK, not too many pictures, but it does look like this guy has the original box and all the accessories. So that's actually a, a pretty reasonable price. That's about what I could ask for this in its current condition now. Granted, the value is going to go up over time. Uh, there is no yellowing or anything. These don't necessarily look like very old stickers, but that's not really saying anything crazy so that very well might be a brand new uh it says open box right there but if you look at it it looks like it's still sealed and those do look like the original stickers so nine hundred dollars all right one thousand dollars or best offer and this is not worth it because this is open box and this is modified as well this is not a original unmodified unmolested version uh it has the red led mod might even have a mod chip soldered on the board which looks cool don't get me wrong if you're just keeping this for you and you're trying to pimp it out that's great but if you're trying to maintain the value of this controller as a collector's item don't modify it all right 800 dollars or best offer open box all right so again very similar condition to like the one i have here looks like it's in pretty good condition 800 bucks and then here's some of the shell kits that i was talking about here which you can buy the individual pieces or you can buy the whole kit. This battery tray door on the inside does not have that rubber strip right there, which was installed from the factory from Microsoft. So that would be a telltale sign that this is a forgery. Also, that serial number on the inside of the shell, if you were to disassemble it, would be different than a licensed Microsoft shell. So as you can see, the paddles that they're selling as replicas are just maroon. And the ones that you're supposed to have have lighter red that is representing blood blood splatter so that's a telltale sign that these are not it yep and as you can see this one says never fight alone uh there are seven different sayings like i mentioned mine just says gears four in there but there are seven sayings so if if you were able to get all seven of these controllers, which would be virtually impossible because you would have to buy so many of them because think about it, you might accidentally get a double that has the same one. Um, to get all seven versions of the this controller would be extremely expensive considering they're about 500 to $1,100 a pop depending on the condition of the controller. But if you could get all seven of them, that would be a great, a great collection. I'd have mad props and mad respect for you, Stallion or Stallionette. All right, so 
I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this video by going over a quick checklist or rundown. I might even make like a PDF document or something and link it in the description. So when you guys buy a limited edition collector's controller, you know exactly what you're looking for. First of all, the condition of the box. Is it dented, scra scratched, or scraped? And next, if it is being claimed to be a new sealed, a new brand new inbox sealed, look at the stickers. Does it look like underneath the stickers, the ink of the box has been torn up, which means they probably opened it and are now sticking new clear sticker labels on it, trying to pass it off as a new. So secondly, with this controller, basically we know everything about this controller now. Uh, you wanna make sure all the included accessories are there. And then also, you know, when you buy these things on eBay and whatnot, you can't really test them, but it is great if you can, if you have the opportunity because you're dealing with the seller face to face to plug it directly into an Xbox. And if you go into the accessories, there is a little uh, beaker or, you know, science vial that you can click on that allows you to run a diagnostic check on your controller where it shows you if you have stick drift and make sure that all the buttons work. And then also I would plug headphones into the bottom into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and something into the accessory port in the bottom as well, like maybe the Microsoft keyboard accessory, make sure all that works. I would lift up the battery tray. I would look at the serial number and make sure it matches up or is similar to the one that I showed you in this video with my authentic one here. I would also make sure that the label underneath the battery tray door isn't slanted or cocked, which means somebody probably removed it. Uh, remove the T8 screw, disassemble the controller, and then replace that sticker. That is a telltale sign. Make sure all the included accessories are there. If it is a controller that does have a certificate of authenticity, like my uh, Scuf Porsche 911 GT2 controller, uh, which is the next controller, we are gonna do an episode very similar to this. I'm gonna showcase everything about that controller, go very in depth in the weeds with what you need to be looking for, as that is also another very rare controller. Not quite as rare as this one, but it's getting there quickly. So I know this video is long. I did put timestamps. Hopefully that was beneficial for you guys to bounce around to a specific part of the video, or hopefully you just watched the whole damn thing. Not only does that get my view minutes up, which really tickles me in the gamer nether regions, but it also is beneficial for you guys. Now you have a lot more knowledge to arm yourself if you are building a collection of limited edition and collector's controllers. And that is finally going to do it, guys. A long video, but sometimes the longest things give you the most satisfaction. Am I right, Stallionettes? So if you Stallions and Stallionettes did enjoy this video, liking it, not just keeping it to yourself, but showing the world you liked it by hitting that like button below. It's free, takes three seconds, helps this video to reach more people that might be interested in this very topic, which in turn helps me grow this little channel and encourages me to keep making content just like this. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a ton of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as Onyx product reviews around the gaming space. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. And don't buy any forgeries on eBay.